Six years ago, I ran for office my first time. It wasn't on my to-do list. And I had called, actually, to get how un uninformed people can be. I called the Legislative Service Office in Wyoming and said, do you have a policy manual, a guidebook, on how to be a legislator? And the, <laughs> there was dead silence at the end of the phone saying, well, ma'am, if you get elected, we will give you information. <laughs> Needless to say, I had a lot of work to do. But when I was approached to run for the legislative position, which was an open seat, it was not on my to-do list. And I was humbled that people would think that I could be their representative. And as you heard, I do come from a small community. And in fact, I come from an unincorporated community and uh, just recently got DSL. So um, <laughs> we can be a bit challenged. <laughs> My involvement with uh, representative democracy and with We the People and with this program has been one of the highlights of my career so far because it's working with people like yourselves. But most important, the core value for me is our youth. It's about preserving the quality of life that I've experienced, enhancing it, and making certain that they will have some great opportunities when I'm not here to make policy or sausage. <laughs> and you know, by the way, I come from Wisconsin originally, so I know about a good bratwurst. <laughs> What Letitia was saying is true. What Mr. Rosenthal was saying is true. It's about engagement. And it's about getting you excited as an educator about how to be involved in what I do as a volunteer, really, for the people of Wyoming. But I do have a choice. I have a choice to run. I have a choice to serve. And those are critical. I felt like it was a sense of responsibility. When these folks asked me to run for the legislature, it was like, OK. I've spent 25 years being a business person in a small community. I need to get involved. I need to be a part of that policy decision because really most of us have a background in some kind of experience. In our legislature, we have over 23 different occupations minimum that are involved. It's not about whether you're wealthy or retired or you have the time. It's like Letitia says, it's about having an interest in what's happening in your day-to-day -day lives. More importantly, for you as an educator, I think it's important to keep uh, the local level of participation at the front line for your young people. Uh, when I was campaigning my first time, and my district is 35 miles long. It goes from the base of the Bighorn Mountains to the Montana border. It's quite rural. So you don't do a lot of door-to-door. -door. When people say to me, well, I've already gotten around twice now to every door in my district, I'm going, I can't even find their driveway. <laughs> And not only that, it's respect. I wouldn't even consider going up their driveway if I hadn't called them in advance. So I might as well just have a phone call with them. But I had all these people asking me about GDL. Well, guess what? I had to go back and get on the internet and find out what GDL meant. It means graduated driver's license. So this is a way that do you listen to your constituents? Do you hear them? Do you have a conversation about what's important to them? We had. In that time frame, we had had several young people die from car accidents, some under the influence of um, drugs and alcohol, but others just not knowing how to drive. Not having any children of my own, I didn't really uh, understand that process and frustration of being a parent and having to teach your child to drive, and it would be much better to have a program of driver's education. Well, in the 80s, when everyone was having problems financing their educational budget, what got cut? All those extracurricular events and activities. And one of them for us was driver's education in Wyoming. It took me three years with collaboration, compromise, education, advocating, being involved in the school system to pass graduated driver's license. And I'm proud to say we were 49th in the nation to have a program in place. Um, <laughs> and we now have all 50 with some form of graduated driver's license. Well, when you talk about do you agree on the issue, yes, I can agree that we need some kind of graduated driver's license. Now, it's in the details. Does that mean that they can't drive between midnight and 5 a.m.? Uh, can they have one friend with them in the car? Can their family be there? Do they need X number of hours to drive at night? Well, look at this room. 
I bet all of you have a difference of opinion on that. But some of the best advice and input that I got were from our young people. Going into the school, it's how I really got charged about being a legislator. Because it wasn't so much about me talking, it was about me listening and having them raise their hand to have eight classes of seventh graders totally excited and upset that I was taking away their right to drive. <laughs> it was fun. It was just like Leticia was talking about. It was great because they're standing there with their hands up. They're inter interrupting each other. And the teachers, they're going, I didn't know that kid could be excited. <laughs> and they have opinions. You know, one day I'm in a classroom and they said, so do you drive a Chevy or a Ford pickup? <laughs> it was important to this young man. He was actually able to have a conversation. Another part of having accessibility is that one of the younger teachers at a school only two miles from where I live called my legislative service office to find out who her representative was to see if she could participate in the back to school program with legislators. I was stunned. I just assumed they would know who their legislator was. That's how much work there is to do out there in promoting representative democracy in promoting civic engagement. And the issues are difficult, and they're numerous. I mean, we can just take, uh, for example, our energy crisis. I come from a state that has so many natural resources that we don't know how to diversify our economy in any other way but in developing oil and gas. And the demands on a national level are intense. And so we have to figure out ways of doing that in a very reasonable, common sense matter, and yet be financially responsible. We need to be able to save in our state. We're only one of two states that really have a fiscally sound budget with a surplus. How fabulous is that in today's economy? Right, so then what do we do with it? How much do we save? Do we develop infrastructure? Do we uh, start new programs? Do we end programs? And one of the things that we did in the last couple of years is work on a program called the Hathaway Scholarship. And it has to do with providing a higher education for all young people in Wyoming who graduate from high school or have an equivalent of a GED or something on that order so they can continue their education. Well, can you imagine what that would be like to have 90 people discussing what parameters should be involved? Which courses should they take? Do, do they need a foreign language, for example? Uh, what should their grade point average be? What happens if they fail in their first semester at college or community college? Should they be able to go to vocational school? These are all the m many details that you have to work out and have that debate. And it's not about arguing. It's about having a conversation. And if we can get back to that level, not only at the state level, which I think we're the best promoters of being able to do that, I think we can even change what's happening at a federal level. That it's not about just my idea, it's about all of us together having a conversation and coming up with what we think is the best solution. Will it be perfect? No. We will continue to tweak that and that's what we do every day that we're in session and quite honestly that's what I do 24-7 is listen for new ideas and how to serve my district and the people of Wyoming best. I'm